Hello, everybody, and welcome to McLean Church Online. My name is Chris Norris, your online site pastor, and a special thank you to everybody who made Easter at McLean Church so special. Across all of our locations, including right here at McLean Church Online, we had a wonderful weekend. It started with our Good Friday services that really set the stage for what would take place on Sunday, and we all know that. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And what a wonderful celebration we had uh, from our worship music to the message to the time that we got to spend together in fellowship to everybody dressed in their Easter best, all the photos being taken. It was just a wonderful holiday. And we are grateful to each of you who took part in being there in person or right here at, online. What a wonderful time to be reminded and renewed of Jesus' promise to us, the eternal life, that he provides through his death and resurrection. Well, I'd like to start today's services by opening God's word as we always do. I'm gonna to open today to Psalm 55, verses 22. It says this, "'Give your burdens to the Lord, "'and he will take care of you. "'He will not permit the godly to slip and fall.'" I heard a quote recently that said, "'Don't tell God how big your problems are, "'rather tell your problems how big your God is.'" Right, and this just spoke to me because I think, it, oftentimes in our lives, you know, I've noticed this personally with with when we pray at dinner, and my son starts to kind of uh, go through his laundry list of things that he needs prayer for. You know, his upcoming spelling test, his baseball practice, um, his his outing with his friends, all these things. And I thought, man, you know, sometimes we are guilty of kind of coming before God with a whole list of problems that we present to Him. And this quote just shifted my mind to say, you know, instead of coming to God and, and, and bringing him all these requests, granted, he will see them through and he wants us to come before him. Sometimes maybe we face our problems, reminding our problems how big our God is. And I don't know what kind of problems you're going through right now, big or small. Look those problems in the eye. Tell yourself that this problem is big, but my God is bigger and speak that truth right into those problems. Every time you get stressed or discouraged about something, remind yourself, your mind, in that problem that your God is bigger and your God has always provided, just like the scriptures remind us time and time again. And what a great connection we were able to make with Pastor Brian's message on Easter Sunday when he talked about that, that darkness that comes oftentimes before the dawn of a new day. And it's sometimes living in that darkness, going through a problem, experiencing some of that, that turmoil like uh, Jesus' followers did on that Saturday before Sunday. Sometimes that's really good for us because in those moments we can go to our God and we can be confident in knowing that no problem that we're facing, no darkness that we might be walking through, can really overcome or overpower the love of Christ in our lives. So I loved that connection Brian made. I thought of that quote immediately. I wanted to share that with you today, and I hope it provides some encouragement to you as you might be walking through a dark season, you might be experiencing some problems. There is no problem too big for our God. So look your problems in the eyes this week and remind them that you've got God on your side. And although things might be dark, the light is coming soon. And speaking of that, as we are on the eve of the solar eclipse here on April 8th, 2024 is when that will take place. We've got a special message for you in store today. Uh, each of our locations, our, our sites, our uh, pastors are preaching uh, about that. So in Union City, Pastor Lenore is speaking. Uh, in Edinburgh, Pastor Mike is speaking. And those joining online get to hear from me today. We are talking about light and darkness, kind of, kind of following up on that theme from Easter Sunday, specifically how the eclipse and this moment of darkness that's actually going to be pretty cool can kind of be connected and, and, and really visualized through the, the darkness that we experience and the light of Christ in our lives and how, you know, this is a really cool event that's probably gonna be over with pretty quickly. But man, isn't it encouraging to know that the, the light of, of Christ in our lives is a spectacle worth holding on to long beyond uh, what we will experience uh, with the eclipse. So I encourage you to hang around for that. We've got a special message that is timely as we prepare for this global phenomenon of experiencing the total solar eclipse. So hang around for that message later. In the meantime, I wanna kick things over to our worship team so we can continue in today's service together. 
Hello everyone, I'm your friendly neighborhood, Spence. Thrilled to be worshiping with you wherever you are right now. And as we worship together today, we'd like to share with you the beginning of Psalm 86, which is a prayer of David. It begins, bend down, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me, for I need your help. Protect me, for I am devoted to you. Save me, for I serve you and trust you. You are my God. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am calling on you constantly. Give me happiness, O Lord, for I give myself to you. O Lord, you are so good, so ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. Listen closely to my prayer, O Lord. Hear my urgent cry. I will call to you whenever I'm in trouble, and you will answer me. Shine your light and let the whole world see. 
you made will come and bow before you Lord they will praise your holy name for you are great and perform wonderful deeds you alone are God you are good you are good when there's nothing good in me you are love you are love on display for all to see you are light you are light when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. You are peace, you are peace when my fear is crippling. You are true, you are true, even in my wandering. You are joy, you are joy. You're the reason that I see You are life, you are life And your death has lost its sting And oh, I'm running to your arms I'm running to your arms The riches of your love Will always be enough Nothing
will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reigns. I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing Teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may live according to your truth. Grant me purity of heart so that I may honor you. With all my heart, I will praise you, O Lord, my God. I will give glory to your name forever, for your love for me is very great. You have rescued me from the depths of death. Well, I want to thank you again for being with us today here at McLean Church Online. We are so grateful that you have decided to maybe come back. Perhaps last week was your first Sunday uh, joining us in person or online because we all know that Christmas and Easter is one of the days that a lot of people come to church. And we are always so excited to see each and every one of you. Maybe you're back this week to experience more uh, of what God has in store for you in the year ahead. So we're gr grateful you're here. And if this is your first time here, this is the part of the service uh, where we pause and we give back uh, our tithes and our offering, uh, basically our money, right? We, we, we really are so grateful uh, to be able to operate as a church uh, across different ministry areas and be able to provide for those in need because of the generosity of our church. You know, from our, from our breakfast that we have at our physical location to everything you see here online today, the camera that I'm talking into, uh, the computer that we will edit the services on, uh, the worship music that we record, all of that is because of the generosity of people who make giving back a portion of, of their finances to our church. And if you are here for the first time or maybe just the second or third time, that's okay. We don't, we don't want your money. Pray about it. Consider making a financial contribution to McLean when and if you're ready. But I promise you that when you do that, you will see God show up in a mighty way. Every time I meet somebody who is starting to give even just a little bit, I always see it compound, right? They started with X amount of dollars and they saw God use that in a pretty powerful way. And then they gave a little bit more and they saw God use it even more. And without a doubt, God always takes what you offer. He puts it into the church and finds ways to reach people and show people his love in and through McLean Church. So with all of that being said, thank you for uh, giving back. And we make it pretty easy for those of you watching online or even listening on the radio, I would encourage you right now or when you're not driving a vehicle to go to mcleanchurch.org slash give. We also have a great app, uh, the McLean mobile app. Just search the app store for McLean Church. You'll find it on there and you can actually go into the app and set up a recurring payment. You know, start off with $10. Whatever you can give, we are grateful that you choose to do so and I promise you like I have seen many times in my life God will take whatever you bring before him and he will use it for some amazing things so get ready for that to happen regardless let me pray for our offering today father God we thank you so much for the person that is finally deciding that it's either time to start to give back to McLean Church or maybe they're gonna increase what they've already given either way God we know that you will take one dollar or one hundred dollars and you'll do some pretty special things with it god we are grateful for the people that have given to our ministries for many years we are in a, a wonderful place and serving a lot of people because of the faithfulness of your church and we ask you today to use the faithfulness of the people that bring their offering before you to continue to spread your love across the region 
um, across our ministry areas and just touch the lives and the hearts of people to remind them that they are loved by you and that the church is the gateway uh, to your love. And we are grateful to be a part of that journey. Thank you, God, for this time. And thank you, quite honestly, just for the opportunity to give back to you. May you use our offering to bless people immensely. Amen. Oh God, insolent people rise up against me. A violent gang is trying to kill me. You mean nothing to them. But you, O oh Lord, are a God of compassion and mercy. Slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. Look down and have mercy on me. Give me your strength to the servants. Save me, the son of your servant. Send me a sign of your favor, then those who hate me will be put to shame for you. O oh Lord, help me and comfort me. When strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. When strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait.
Well, hello everybody, and again, my name is Chris Norris. I'm the online site pastor here at McLean Church Online, and yes, I'm wearing these pretty cool solar eclipse glasses. And these babies are uh, for the solar eclipse, which will take place on April 8th, 2024. So depending on when you're watching this message, whether you're watching it in real time or after the fact, uh, you may still have time to go get yourself a pair of these, uh, or you may just have to uh, go back and look at pictures if you're watching this after the fact. But regardless, the eclipse is coming. And here in Northwestern Pennsylvania, uh, Erie, Pennsylvania in particular, we are one of the key locations for getting a front and center amazing view of the total solar eclipse. It's going to be awesome. They're expecting hundreds and thousands of extra people traveling to this area to witness uh, watching the totality of the eclipse right above the Great Lakes region. So we're very fortunate to be able to be a part of this amazing event. Uh, and they've got these glasses going out to all the people who are going to be watching the eclipse. And it's a very exciting time to witness this event. And I know I'm excited. I plan to not leave my house. They're recommending people to stay home. So I'm going to walk over to a local park where there's some opening and I'm going to look up in the sky, put these babies on and enjoy the show. And if you don't know what the eclipse is and you've been living under a rock, essentially, uh, I would highly recommend you just do a quick Google search. Uh, and you'll find all the answers about what's going to happen on April 8th rather than me trying to explain it to you. But basically, it's a phenomenon when the moon passes between Earth and the sun, thereby obscuring the image of the sun for us watching here on planet Earth. A total solar eclipse occurs when the moon's apparent diameter is larger than the sun's, blocking all direct sunlight, turning day into darkness. So it's going to be amazing to witness. And as much as I'd love to nerd out about the eclipse today, we're going to talk about a phenomenon that speaks to the depths of our hearts and souls and is not only limited by what our eyes can see. And as we witness the eclipse and the moments of darkness that make it so unique, it's important to remember that darkness, no matter how deep, is only temporary and that the light of Jesus shines eternally. So as we eagerly anticipate the eclipse, take a moment to reflect on the significance of darkness in our lives. You see, darkness comes in many forms. It may be the shadow of doubt, the darkness that comes with despair, or the veil of uncertainty that tests our faith. In the natural world, an eclipse is a rare event where the light of the sun is momentarily obscured by the shadow of the moon. Yet, despite the temporary darkness, we know that the sun will continue to shine and its light will soon break through once again. Similarly, in our spiritual lives, we may encounter moments of darkness. Times when we feel overwhelmed by challenges, doubts, or fears. But just as the sun eventually emerges from behind the moon during an eclipse, so too does the light of Jesus break through the darkness of our lives. Here in this part of northwestern Pennsylvania, our winter season can often feel long, and we don't get to see the sunlight all that often. So when the sun comes out from behind the clouds and the light shines again, we're always pretty happy to see it. Much like navigating through a season of darkness, the light of Jesus and the hope and peace he provides warms our souls and lifts our spirits. In John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. He assures us of his enduring presence. His light shines brightly, dispelling the darkness and guiding us through even the darkest of our days. Are you going through a dark time right now? Remember how recently on Easter Sunday, Pastor Brian reminded us that oftentimes the night is darkest before the dawn of light. Hang in there. The light will shine again soon. And speaking of Easter, while the eclipse captures our attention, Easter stands as the most monumental event in history. A moment when darkness was defeated by the radiant light of resurrection. Picture the scene at the tomb on that first Easter morning. It was a place shrouded in darkness, grief, and despair. And this darkness wasn't something cool to witness, like a solar eclipse. This was darkness that reminded the people that their Savior, Jesus, was dead. And this darkness would last more than a few minutes, like the eclipse will. This darkness lasted for a few days. But even this deep darkness could not extinguish the light that our risen Savior would provide. You see, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the ultimate victory over darkness. It is a triumph of life over death, hope over despair, and light over darkness. 
In Matthew 28, 1 through 10, we witness the power of resurrection as the angel proclaims he is risen. The darkness of death is overcome by the brilliant light of life. Easter reminds us that no tomb, no darkness can hold back the light of Jesus Christ. His victory over death assures us that light will always triumph over darkness. And while the Easter holiday has come and gone, it's important to remember that the message of Easter lives on every day in our lives. And unlike the rarity of a solar eclipse that only happens every so often, the risen Christ is alive and well, shining his light into our lives and reminding us that death and darkness have been defeated. Let's take a moment to reflect on the significance of Easter in our lives. How has the resurrection of Jesus Christ impacted you personally? I'd encourage you to share your answer to that question in the comments. For me, I get emotional at Easter because as I see Jesus hanging up on that cross, I feel guilt and I feel shame. Like, like in some way, my life and my mistakes have let Jesus down. But then on Easter morning when the tomb is empty, I'm reminded that I haven't failed. In fact, I've already won because Jesus knew my shortcomings and my sins and he still went to the cross for me and for you. And because of this truth, I'm able to be encouraged every day of my life, especially when I'm dealing with some darkness or discouragement. So as we journey through life, we inevitably will encounter moments of darkness, times when we feel lost, afraid, or alone. It's in these moments that we must cling to the promise of Easter, the promise that Jesus is alive and his light still shines. Let's explore some practical ways to find light in the darkness. We can start with prayer. And please remember that prayer is simply a coveted conversation with God. I find myself overthinking prayer sometimes, thinking that I need to say something profound in those quiet moments. And speaking of quiet moments, they are few and far between when you've got kids at home, am I right? I have found it helpful to talk with God in the, in the car, after school drop off, or even when I'm at the gym or out for a walk. The important thing is to come to Him, communicate with Him, and share the darkness that you may be experiencing. Joining a community is also a great way to find light during a dark time. I think we all realize the importance of community gatherings a few years ago during the pandemic. And whether they're in person or online, finding a group of people who can share life with you and help you work through challenging times together is very beneficial. And finally, lean on the promises of Scripture. Read your Bible every day. Start a devotional. Open the YouVersion Bible app and type the word LIGHT into the search box and watch all the passages and reading plans that show up. It's truly amazing and I highly recommend it. And as followers of Christ, we are called to live in the light of His love and grace. This means that we allow His light to illuminate every area of our lives, to dispel the darkness of sin, doubt, and fear. It means walking in the truth of His word and sharing His light with others. In Psalm 119, 105, we are reminded that God's word is a lamp to guide our feet and a light for our path. I've also loved this verse because it, it doesn't say that his light reveals everything we need to know and all of the answers to life. Wouldn't that be nice? It simply says that the light will guide our feet, allowing us to take one step at a time, trusting in God, and the light shines our path but not shows where the path leads, right? We must simply use the light of God to take things one day at a time and to eliminate the darkness that is oftentimes distracting us from God's plan. Living in the light of Christ is not always easy, especially in a world that is filled with darkness. However, by abiding in Him and allowing His light to shine through us, we can make a difference in the lives of those around us. Let's explore practical ways to live out the principles of Christ's light in our daily lives, such as showing love and kindness to others, standing up for justice and righteousness, in being a beacon of hope in a world that often feels hopeless. Let's also encourage one another to remain steadfast in our faith, knowing that the light of Christ will never be overcome by darkness. So as we prepare to witness the eclipse, let us also remember the eternal light of Jesus Christ. I feel like I've been talking about the eclipse for so many months, and before you know it, it will come and pass. But the hope of Jesus and the light He provides for our lives is forever. And may we take comfort in knowing that darkness is only temporary, but His light shines forever. And as we journey through life's shadows, may we fix our eyes on the risen Savior who promises to lead us into the glorious light of His presence. Will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for the light that is your Son, Jesus. And God, as we prepare for such a 
amazing event, and we stand in awe of your creation and what this world can do sometimes to remind us that you created it in the beauty of your image. God, we remember that darkness is temporary. And yes, quite practically, darkness is temporary during this eclipse and during these moments where we will be looking to the sky to see the totality. But God, some of us are experiencing darkness that doesn't seem to want to leave. And right now we're in the middle of it. And there is no sunlight. There are no glasses to wear. We're waiting for that light to shine again. And we are reminded on the heels of Easter that that light came in the form of your son, Jesus, who died on the cross to save us from our sins so that we will forever know that darkness will not last forever because the darkness of that tomb where he lay was overcome with lightness when he arose. And we will always be grateful for that phenomenon, for that event that we celebrate. So God, I just ask that you be with us, Lord, for those people that are watching today that are experiencing that darkness. May they be encouraged to know that your light will shine in that dark place soon. And God, I just pray that we can really take a moment on April 8th to enjoy the eclipse as well. And as we witness this really cool event, may us as followers of Jesus also be reminded of the connection that this event makes in our faith lives as well. Thank you for the truth. Thank you for the light. And thank you for your love. Amen. Well, church, I really hope that you do take a chance to uh, be a part of the solar eclipse. And whether you're watching that here in Erie, Pennsylvania, or you're watching it from anywhere around the country, definitely when you see those few moments where the sunlight is blocked by the moon, remember that you might be living in that moment. You might be experiencing that darkness, but it will only be a moment because Darkness will always be dispelled by light. And whether it is only a few moments or whether it feels like forever, the important thing is to know that Jesus will always provide the light you need to overcome the darkness. And I want to encourage you to join us again next week uh, as Pastor Brian will be starting a new three-week series, Life Lessons from Legends Women's Edition. We did this sermon series in the fall, but this spring we are going to be hearing from some of the most iconic women from the Old Testament. So you're going to want to be here for that. There's also a lot of great things happening this spring at McLean Church. I would encourage you to visit our website to keep up to date with all of that. All that information and more can be found at mcleanchurch.org. Enjoy the eclipse, and we'll see you back here next week at McLean Church Online.